Okay, so now we have identified all our assets. We know what the value is, what the consequences of an exposure are, what threats there are, what kind of mitigation strategies we have. Uh, and now it really goes down to how do we design our system in a secure way. Uh, and there are a number of things that we might want to look at. Uh, first of all, we need to keep in mind what I already said in the very beginning, that this is uh, a trade-off and a typical trade-off on an architectural level is with the performance and the usability or user experience qualities. So that's always something we need to keep in mind that uh, at some point we can add more security but it will slow down the system or it will make it less scalable. Uh, at some point users will start resisting uh, and for example a common issue here is uh, if you make the password policies really complex and you require users to change the passwords all the time, what happens is simply that the users will start writing them down so, uh, and they will be annoyed. So in the end, it might not help you very much uh, with the overall system usability and not even with the security maybe. So that's something that uh, is very important to keep in mind and then you can really try to go into the different aspects of a system. And this starts with uh, the choice of technology. So you might choose certain uh, components of the shelf, so existing libraries, existing subsystems, uh, and they might impact your choice. For example, a system might require a password authentication that does not support two-factor authentication. So then what do you do with this? Uh, a programming language might have certain security concerns. Uh, so for example, if you use C or C++, you need to handle memory management. And that's something that can be security relevant because if you don't do it properly, someone might just be able to read or write to any memory location, which uh, makes it very difficult to protect certain parts uh, of your memory. So, the programming language might have consequences. Um, the deployment, for example, might have consequences. If you choose to use the uh, application through a web interface and access is possible from everywhere in the world through the internet, that has consequences. So all of these on a technology level needs to be taken into account. Uh, and that's, for example, why in certain areas uh, in safety critical systems, for example, there's a preference or sometimes even a requirement for certain programming languages uh, because they're, for example, better for security or safety. Um, but at least these are the things you might want to look in on the, on the first level. What, what kind of uh, technology choices are we taking or what, what choices do we have to take depending on uh, dependencies, for example, or depending on requirements? And what can we do against this? And usually this again leads to uh, the discussion about threads and how do we mitigate them. So if your library, for example, requires uh, an authentication, you're using a component that's deployed in the web and you need to communicate over the internet, so you cannot change that, then maybe you want to take other measures so that even if the network traffic is intercepted, it still uh, doesn't lead to an intrusion. So that's, for example, one thing that might be there and it it might the alternative might simply be to develop this component yourself which might be very expensive so it's again another trade-off it's a cost trade-off uh, so this is on the technology level then we have the architecture level uh, so the question is how do we design the system how do we break it down into components that it is more secure uh, and an aspect we typically talk about in this uh, area is the notion of protection versus the notion of distribution. And the idea here is that it's uh, much easier to protect your assets, your data, if they are in one place. For example, you have a single database, it's much, much easier to just add layers of security around it. You can add encryption, you can add additional authentication, you can add all these layers uh, that make it very unlikely that someone can access it or intrude in any way. The problem is, if someone manages, the consequences are much larger because you essentially have a single point of failure. So if someone manages to get into your single database or crash it, then he or she directly has access to everything. So either the entire data gets exposed or the entire system is unavailable. So that's the drawback of protection. 
And the alternative is to say, well, we distribute the assets. For example, in the patient case, we have the patient names in one database and the patient data in another database. So then uh, if it gets exposed, the person either has the names or the patient record, but not both together. So one alone might not be very useful. Uh, or we just, for terms of availability, we deploy the same patient records to multiple databases. So if someone manages to crash one, the system is still operational. Um, the problem is exactly the opposite as with the protection. Uh, if you distribute the assets, it's much harder to protect them because you need additional communication between the different places. Uh, and that basically adds additional places where someone could intrude. For example, additional network connections, uh, additional bugs in the technology that you're using. So uh, this is also not an ideal thing. And this is in practice, again, one of our trade-offs uh, that we need to take into consideration. How do we do this? Um, and there is no easy answer to that. It depends a lot on your assets, for example. If you might have assets that are not as critical, uh, it might be a very good idea to distribute them because it's not that important to protect each of them, but the availability is maybe more important. So the answer here is it depends, but you need to think about this. And depending on your needs, you might need to choose different security architectures. So uh, if, for example, protection is the focus, it might be an idea to use a layered architecture where you have a single layer uh, where all your data is stored and you can add a lot of encryption. If you need more distribution, then maybe you need to choose a different approach of doing this. For example, a client server model where you have multiple servers with the same data. Um, there are concrete, on a third level, there are concrete design guidelines uh, that we can look at, uh, both for design and for programming. I'll discuss the programming later because programming guidelines are usually or often they're specific to a language. But we have some general um, guidelines and in the slides there are 10 of them. I will not discuss all of them here, but maybe just uh, a couple of them. So the first one, and that's maybe a bit abstract, but you should kind of base your security on explicit policies. So I've mentioned this before, you should think about the policies in your company, assets, procedures, regulations. Uh, and the main idea here is that security is expensive. It comes at a cost of performance, usability, and uh, other tra trade-offs. So you shouldn't just throw security at your system, but you should really think about it in a concrete way. What needs to be protected? What needs to be available? How do we assure this? And how do we balance it with, for example, usability? So think first and then go into the security, not just add whatever you can. Uh, another one which is related to protection here is don't have a, a try to avoid having a single point of failure, like a single database, because if it crashes, if it's accessed, uh, the severity is much larger. The entire system is gone or the entire data is getting exposed. Um, Another principle, uh, which is five in the list, is log user actions, or I'll just write log here, because in general, the idea is attacks happen, and the better you can identify them, the better you can understand them, the more you can protect your system in the future, and the quicker you are aware of what happened. For example, if all your passwords somehow get exposed, uh, there is a difference whether you realize this two hours later or two weeks later. So usually try to log as much as possible, for example, changes to your assets, login of users, actions of users to understand what's going on. Um, then there is the concept uh, eight in the list, which is maybe a bit hard to understand, that's why I mention it here, and that's co compartmentalize complicated word, your assets. Uh, and what this means is essentially that you shouldn't have all the assets in one place because then the exposure has quite severe consequences. And I already made the example here. If you, for example, have the patient records, uh, if you manage to separate the names from the record, then a successful attack doesn't have as severe consequences. You might need the entire uh, 
the entire picture, the entire distributed data to actually get some kind of value out of your intrusion. So uh, trying to compartmentalize that might help with it. Um, and then I think the other one that might be a bit tricky to understand, so I'll mention it here, is design for deployment. Uh, and that's not directly clear what this means, I think, from the name or why it's security relevant. The idea here is that your application is designed, is programmed in a way that it's easy, that it's straightforward to deploy it. Um, and in practice, many applications are really, really complicated to deploy. So they need lots of configuration. You need to make sure that everything is in the right place. Uh, all the configuration scripts are correct and so on. And the problem is that uh, because this is so complex, this could easily lead you to introduce vulnerabilities. So for example, if it's very complicated to set up the database, then what happens is that people forget to remove the default password, for example, and someone can just log in with admin, admin. Uh, so it's these kind of simple mistakes that are being made because the deployment process is uh, very complicated. So the idea here is basically don't forget about it, don't forget about the deployment, try to really think about how can you make this easy and efficient to deploy because this does have a security impact. It has a lot of other impacts as well, like the usability for the administrators or the operators, uh, like the frequency, how often you can deploy, but it's definitely uh, also security relevant. So there are uh, a number of other ones here, another guidelines. I would recommend you to look at the slides. I will not cover them all in detail, uh, but essentially we have these abstract policies, guidelines that are independent of what programming language or what technology you're using. Uh, so in addition to looking at the technology and the architecture is a good idea to think about what kind of guidelines can we follow. And now in the last part of the module we go some, uh, we look at some concrete guidelines for a programming language doing secure